My name is Adi, and I'm a product manager at Google. Um, you've already heard today from Tris and Robert and a few other speakers about how we improve Gemma's multilingual abilities, making it state-of-the-art in dozens of languages. But I wanted to provide a little bit more color into how we did this, why we think this is so important, and hopefully inspire you to build your own application leveraging this skill. So already today, 80% of Gemma users come from outside the US. And over 64% of users come from countries where English is not the primarily spoken language. But even beyond these numbers, we know that every developer building an application would like to reach global audiences. They, they want to meet, to meet their users where they are and whatever language they speak. Earlier this year, we launched a competition with Kaggle, inviting developers to fine-tune their own version of Gemma, tailored to a specific language or languages or cultural context. We re received over 7,000 entries in this competition, and that really highlighted for us the need that the community has for multilingual models, multi multicultural models. So with Gemma 3, we listened, and we doubled down on the multilingual performance, enhancing its performance across a variety of languages and different tasks. Gemma 3 features 140 languages represented in pre-training, and over 35 languages out of the box working at an instruction tune setting. Um, and it makes Gemma 3 an even better basis to fine tune your own further for a specific language or cultural context. A few numbers here. Uh, we ran various uh, multilingual benchmarks on, on Gemma on a variety of tasks, including machine translation, reasoning, cross-lingual transfer, and we saw improvements across the board compared to previous versions. You can see all these numbers and others in the tech report. And I also wanted to highlight um, uh, stats that Robert showed, showed earlier. These are uh, our internal evaluations measuring Gemma's uh, instruction tune performance in a few languages, and uh, th they're really incredible. So they, they're comparable to GPT 4.0. So how did we do that? Uh, we invested in various places throughout the pipeline to improve uh, multilinguality. First of all, Gemma 3 is based on a new tokenizer from the Gemini tokenizer, which favors non-English text, making an excellent basis for multilingual applications. In pre-training, we carefully curated the data which we include in the mix. We've looked at quality both within each language bucket, but also across languages, and optimized the mix. Um, we also doubled the multilingual share of content, which we pre-train on. In post-training, we created a carefully curated set of instruction following um, prompts and, and data sets from both human and synthetic methods. And we made really sure to cover a wide variety of use cases, languages, cultural contexts. And we made sure that each sample we include feels very native and very fluent. And throughout this process, we evaluated the model on uh, many multilingual benchmarks uh, r ranging from different tasks and we carefully looked at the quality of the final output of the model. Another very important emphasis which we kept during this process was to not compromise the quality of English language um, or other model capabilities such as reasoning or coding. So we improved all of this while keeping the rest even better. Let's look at a quick example. So here you have a picture that somebody on our team snapped in Berlin. Um, it's a sign, and we asked Gemma, can you tell us what, what do we see here in this sign? Uh, so Gemma correctly identifies the languages in the sign and uh, translates it. It's very easy. Um, and it also gives us a little bit of context as to the sign. You know, it's probably snapped in Berlin. Uh, it's a sign that was common during the Cold War. So it gives us a little bit of context as to what we see here. So this is a simple example, but I think it highlights how important multilingual capabilities are when they're combined with other Gemma capabilities. In this case, multimodal, but also long context, reasoning, and many others. So we know that Gemma 3 will power many diverse and global applications. This could be various businesses, like a financial institution or a healthcare provider in Europe, and they might uh, want to build a chatbot support platform, and they would like it to support hundreds of languages for their users. 
It could be a startup leveraging Gemma to uh, build a product integration tool, and they'd like it to support the languages supported in the product. It could be researchers who are um, uh, consuming information and analyzing in one language and producing insights in another language. It could be educators leveraging Gemma to, to bridge gaps with their students in various places in the world. And we also know that uh, a, a specific variety of a variant of Gemma could be a very powerful tool to preserve cultural contexts, um, and especially for lower, no, lesser known languages and lesser known con uh, cultures. One great example of this is a sea lion model. So sea lion is a collaboration across Google and AI Singapore, which is a research institute in Asia. And uh, we jointly developed a model based on the Gemma 209B model that's specifically tailored for Southeast Asian languages. And as you know, Southeast Asia is a very rich region culturally and linguistically with, with over a thousand native languages. Um, so this model was continually pre-trained and then also instruction tuned, focusing specifically on these languages. And we're proud to say that when we evaluated it on a benchmark of uh, Southeast Asian um, uh, uh, questions, then we saw that it performs better than similarly sized models and much better than previous versions. As you can imagine, an important consideration in this project was curating high quality training data. So here again, AI Singapore and Google collaborated um, to, to curate this data uh, by using a team of linguists and native speakers. And not only that, but uh, coming soon is Project Aquarium, which will make all this data that was curated available for everyone to use and for developers to use for their own projects. And it would also allow users and developers to contribute other data sets to the open community to benefit other researchers and, and other uh, users. Um, so we already see this model being an inspiration for other regions and other places around the world. And we hope to see this be a model of how open information flows and develops uh, AI uh, innovation. So lastly, I'll finish with a few tips for developers um, in case they choose to further fine tune their own variant based on Gemma 3. First of all, evaluation is very important. Um, having a quality set that you believe in to hill climb on is very important. And for this purposes, having a, a, a tra translated data set is better than, than none. Second, Gemma's strong tokenizer and pre-training exposure could lead to very high gains already in the post-training stage. So in some of our experiments, we've seen that a post-trained model for a specific language can perform e even better than a model that's monolingually trained from scratch. And lastly, a bit of encouraging news. Uh, in a lot of our research, we saw that just a little bit of instruction tuning samples can really go a long way in improving the model's instruction following ability. So even as few as 40 samples can improve uh, instruction following also in, mod in languages that the model hasn't seen before. So, we, the model is now live, and we invite you to get started at Google AI for Developers or our partner platforms. Um, thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>